and good evening everybody and welcome to Dave's Tackle Box. It's Sunday the 15th of December 2013 and it's been, I think it's fair to say it's been quite a busy day and a busy weekend. Certainly been a busy day, isn't it mate? Well, oh, God on. Lots of things happening today that surprises everyone. <laughs> so we're going to be having a quick look at uh, uh, this World Vaping Organisation, aren't we? We are. We're going to have a quick talk about that and see if we can figure out what's going on there. I shall read chat and try and do stuff, but again, I forgot to put the red hair pieces in, sorry. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, I'm over the hangover now. Oh, yeah? Yeah, mostly. <laughs> you couldn't mostly. have drunk enough then, so could you? I, um, it was my birthday on Friday, and uh, I got loads and loads and loads of messages on Facebook. It was cool. It was great. And uh, But to celebrate, I went uh, to see The Damned, supported by The Ruts. In Manchester last night, and it was good, and I drank quite a lot. It's a bit like last year, really. <laughs> so, you know, I'd like to say for a change, but no, that seems to have become the pattern. So, yeah, I'm a little tender, but uh, so I'm keeping it simple tonight. Shall I get so, Chuck to sing happy birthday to you? Um, I won't hear them. Oh, well, will not then. No, but they, they can if they want amongst themselves. So I've got a new toy to play with, a new camera thing, but I haven't even got it set up yet because it's like really complicated. <laughs> so we're going to look at that. Uh, we're also going to be talking a bit about uh, tomorrow and, and indeed what's going on at the moment as well, which is a, a Twitter bomb. Well, yeah, Twitter bomb has nearly crashed my machine. The blow things are going past that fast. Well, I've got a Twitter bomb going. And uh, yeah. yeah, it's mad. It's I'll mad. share my screen with you. Yeah, you can do that, or I can do it. I don't mind, yeah. Oh, I've done it. Okay, let's get it up on screen. Let's slow down now. There's me on your screen. Yeah, that's you on From a different camera angle. Yes. People can see what I can see now. It's not a pretty sight, dear. I don't know. It's just as bad as what they get, really, isn't it? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk about uh, what's kicking off tomorrow, and we're going to keep an eye on the... Uh, Thunderclap, Twitter bomb. What was the thing you were using? Twuffer. Twuffer. Don't know what that is myself, but there you go. Well, what what Twuffer is? He said, stopping sharing. Oh, go on, then. It gave it gave gave me the ability to sit and clatter in thirty or forty tweets and schedule them to happen round about nowish. Right. So that so that I could tweet and talk at the same time. This is multitasking. It's something women can do as a matter of course, but I have difficulty with. We, we basically we need a computer application. Yeah, that's basically it. Yes, I'm not yes. going to argue with that. People say, "Yeah, men can't multitask." I bloody know I am one. <laughs> Tweet deck as well, according to Elemental. It's what? Tweet deck will do it. Trouble is, my is tweet decks. Does well, it? My tweet, I've got yeah, that. My tweet decks decked. I've got tweet deck. They've changed it a lot since I used to have it. Yeah, I downloaded it about a week ago or something. And actually, I prefer the TweetDeck. If you go to tweetdeck.twitter.com and you get a web version, so you get TweetDeck in your browser, that's quite good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Right. In the way, if we need another Twitter bomb. Shall we start the show? Yeah, go on. Yeah, let's do that.
Okay, so picture the scene, right? I was a little bit tender, but but <clears throat> definitely legal, driving back from Manchester this morning. And uh, long story short, had to get home and then go back out again to get a Christmas tree. So I'm all, uh, and I've got a show tonight and all the rest of it in panicky. And <laughs> I fired up the computer just to touch base with the VTTV team, let them know I am alive and I've made it back in one piece. And... Um, and I got bombarded with questions from a number of different directions about what's this World Vaping Organisation thing that UKV are a founder member of. And just, I think most people know, but uh, I, I'm a moderator and uh, a, a sort of part owner of UK Vapers. And uh, I got sent a link to a Facebook page showing that we were indeed a founder member of, uh, of the World Vaping Organisation. So. I'll put my cards on the table because there's lots of people still messaging me saying what's it all about and I'll be honest with you I don't really know um, I can tell you exactly uh, what 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 happened with UKV and the World Vaping Organization so far uh, we were approached I believe uh, I, I saw the message I think on Thursday as I was traveling back from Switzerland I was on the train and I saw uh, that uh, somebody called E Baron had approached Prof Beard and sent a draft version of the manifesto, which is now on the World Vaping Organization website, um, outlining an idea uh, suggesting that vendors and vapors and basically forums, reviewers, anybody in the vaping community get together to, uh, to form this World Vaping Organization as a political tool. So, uh, on UKV, we agreed in principle, yeah, that sounds like something that, that we should probably be involved with. It sounds like a good idea. And then I didn't hear anything else. And the next thing I know, people were asking me, what's going on? So, so you now know, <laughs> as much as I know, about the World Vaping Organisation. Uh, the information that we were sent ahead of time is similar to that that has uh, appeared uh, on the WVO website. We can take a quick look at that. Uh, I've got it on screen here, and hopefully there'll be sound too, and there is, that's good. Uh, this is the World Vaping Organisation, uh, this is their manifesto, I shall read it out. And it says, We are a non-profit organisation, we are here to become the muscle of vaping worldwide. We are here to defend against dubious politicians, rogue scientists, control media, biased public organisations and anybody else who hides behind them. Our approach will be swift and powerful, with a team of scientists as advisors, a small army of white-collar solicitors as executors, and a monstrous PR agency to spread our word. Okay, so I'm not going to read the whole thing out, but it's there at worldvaping.org, if, uh, if you want to go and read that in detail, and you probably should. Um, but other, that, other than what they're saying in the manifesto there, uh, I don't really know a lot more about it, but it's an interesting concept, is it not, Dave? Um, yes, and it's the kind of thing that we probably will need further down the road. Um, I've spent most of the day trying to get my head around it, and it, it takes a lot of reading to, uh, to understand, and I'm still not sure I do. It does say that... It's not a trade organisation. Uh, it's going to be run by the users. The users will be the biggest force behind it. You'll elect the board, and that means the decisions will be made by the electorate. It does say that, that, that we need you in huge numbers. Ask your family and friends um, to join up. And then, it's a nice one, actually. It's, it's a really good sentence, is this. It says, it's about time we showed the bureaucrats in the EU and national governments that we have power and that they can bite hard. We do not need thousands. We need hundreds of thousands, and that's actually right. We need hundreds of thousands of people, um, consumers, I feel, um, making their voices heard to the Eurocrats and the bureaucrats. The only little thing that worries me at the moment about the whole thing is that we've spent the best part of 10 months man managing to shed the shackles of this astroturfing thing, and yet all of the founder members of this appear to be vendors and I'm, I'm just a little bit concerned that that might 
at the moment, and this is only at the moment, undo a lot of the work that's being done. I will say, though, that further down the road, I think an organising an organisation like this is going to be necessary, and it is very much in its formative stages at the moment. So, I'm quite encouraged by it. I think I would like to talk more with the organisers and find out more of the time scales that they've got in mind for various different things, like the election of the board and and you know what. Yeah, kind yeah, of that that that, that was to be my point actually. Uh, it'd be good if. Uh, uh, I know there's a thread going um, on UK Vapours where E. Baron is uh, fielding some of the questions. I mean, one of the things that that, that um, there's a lot of people saying, you know, should we donate to this? Um, I can only give my personal view on that at the moment, um, uh, and that is, uh, if if we're raising money uh, and nobody's going to touch it because this is what has been said on UK Vapors if, if, they're, if they're asking for donations but then on the other hand saying that they're not going to actually spend any of that money until a board of directors has been uh, appointed in 2014 then personally I'm going to wait to hear what the board of directors are going to do with the money and uh, th that's just a personal point of view and I think um, anybody else uh, you know <laughs> you know I don't donate money generally to things unless I know where it's going and that's not to suggest that I, I, I'm worried about the money going somewhere it shouldn't it's just um, the manifesto to me all makes sense and uh, I, I agree with Dave that, that, that you know a little down the road you know that there's a definite need for, for something like this but um, I, I want to see something a bit more specific uh, about uh, how the money is going to be used before I donate anything personally. I mean, what's your take on that, Dave? Well, b before I go into that, can I just uh, read out what Mark Shaw's written? He says he doesn't want to knock it, but couldn't help but get his back up with the what have we done comment that came up on that UKV thread. And what I'm, what I'm going to say is now is not the time to start any kind of argy-bargy about that. Um, I think it was an ill-advised comment, but I think it's been answered. And I'm, I'm going to say that of everybody that's been active over these last 12 months, and that numbers thousands, it really does. I think all of the vaping community in the UK, and in fact EUY, has done a terrific job. Um, when you consider where we started this whole thing almost a year ago, and it would be a year on the 19th, um, to say that we got the European Parliament to vote against medicinal regulation is a massive achievement. It's an absolute. That's right. I, 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 we can't. We can't just uh, forget that that happened. I mean, that that was a major achievement. Yeah. Yes, it was, and that's 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 not down to any one person or any small group of people. That's down to the community as a whole, and it's taken a lot of hard work, and there's a lot of people who've been involved with that, and most people know who they are. Eck has been involved. The seat has been involved. Clive, Jerry, loads of people in public health that have, over that period of time, have kind of, if you like, jumped ship from meds and come across to the, to the one true way, as it were. Um, it's been a massive fight. And I can see that there is the potential for a massive fight coming in the future where court cases are going to be required. And a world vaping organisation that can fund court cases worldwide would be a damned good thing to have, especially if they've got the lawyers and the solicitors and the barristers and what have you on tap. However, there's this notion that consumers can bring court cases, and I'm not entirely convinced that that's the case. I think court cases will probably be down to the trade because I think they're the only ones that are going to be able to bring the kind of court cases that are required, but time will tell. So, yeah, that, that's a valid point that you make there because, uh, you know, um, the, the, the court cases of the sort that we're likely to be facing tend to be companies who feel that they are being, um, you know, that the law is being used against them. They're, 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 they're essentially sort of, I won't say civil action because it's commercial, but, but they're, they're, they are kind of civil action suits that you bring, aren't they? Um, yeah, but... I'm it, 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 it's a queer one and, be, and because we don't know how everything's going to pan out and we'll find out more about that tomorrow and I think we're talking about that later um, then we've got a better idea of what kind of court cases can be brought um, but I'm not sure whether 
we as consumers can do anything about that. Um, but certainly the trade, which is now huge when you think about it, the number of different vendors that there are, not just in the UK, but EU-wide, it must number the thousands. And yeah, they probably need an overall umbrella so that they can um, find out what's happening in each different country and, and, and band together to stop the Eurocrats, bureaucrats and, and national governments from trying to have their wicked ways with them. Um, that sounds like a really good idea. I know ACETA is a long way down that road. Um, and I do know, I think ACETA has already been uh, approached by the World Vaping Organization and they too are looking at it and will be making the decision as time goes by. That's my understanding. I've got, I've not had a chance to talk to too many people about it. Um, yeah. But you know, I, I, if we if we can, if we need to bring everybody together under one umbrella and we can do it successfully worldwide, then we are a force to be reckoned with. But I, I have to say that there are other initiatives ongoing at the moment as well, and we need to be a little bit circumspect about how we go about everything. Um, I do think it's a good idea in principle. I would like to know the time scales, and that's that. Once I've got that in my head and I know where we're going then it's, it's a much easier uh, proposition for me to make a, an informed comment on. But I'm not going to go shouting my mouth off. And I, I, I think yes. that's a really fair, that, that, that's, a, that's a perfectly fair position because, um, you know, uh, as I understand it, uh, some of the guys that have been campaigning on our behalf, uh, such as Clive Bates, um, that they're not aware of what the World Vaping Organisation is about. They clearly haven't had any contact at this stage. No. So, you know, there, there, there's, and uh, I, I think that's general advice for anybody <laughs> that's fighting is, uh, you know, uh, against this, uh, whether you be doing it off your own bat or through an organisation or whatever, we do need to uh, keep an eye and make sure that we're all singing from the same hymn sheet. Because, um, you know, that, uh, and, and that, that ironically is what I like about the, the concept of a world vaping organisation. The whole theme is about uniting all the different sort of factions is the wrong word but bodies within the vaping community vendors and reviewers and different forums and people who haven't necessarily sort of agreed on things in the past but we've all got one clear common objective here to start with yes um so uh you know it's important that, that the wvo does the same basically and coordinates with these people who are actually in the forefront of fighting our cause for us at the moment yes i think i think if we if we if we take it that it is a nascent end, that it's just being born, I mean, it's barely 12 hours old from what I can say. Yes, yeah, certainly caused a stir, hasn't it? <laughs> yes. It's, it's barely 12 hours old. It is attracting people joining up, and that can only be a good thing. And if it, even, if, even, if, even if it only becomes a conduit for good, timely information, then it will serve a very, very useful purpose. So I'm... Um, Overall, I'm kind of optimistic about it. I, I do think that the timing, given what's happening tomorrow, could have been a little bit better. I'll be honest. I have to be honest. Sure, um, sure. It's one of the reasons I've not spent a great deal of time worrying about it during the course of the day and trying to find out too much, purely and simply because there's so much occurring tomorrow in Europe and at home. Yeah, and uh, there's a hell of a lot going on. There's the coordinated action today, of course, that, that we've had a little brief look at. Um, uh, and there's a rather important meeting happening tomorrow. Dave, let's talk about that some more. We'll do it after this first break. Oh, you know. Cloud9 Vaping, sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box.
sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. And welcome back. Okay, so Dave, there's, yes. there's some fairly important meetings going on tomorrow. Two rather crucial ones, yes. Talk us through them. Shall we go to Europe first? I like Europe. Right, Brussels tomorrow. I don't like Brussels much, I'll be honest. Well, I've, I've, I've been there twice now. and uh, You need to wash, right? don't it? You need to damn good clean. Yeah, good brushing. Yeah. Um, you know, there was a thought just went through my head there, but never mind, let's, let's park that to one side. <laughs> <clears throat> I do, it was just a run-up down the Place de Luxembourg with somebody bent over on the grass and a brush in my hand. But never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow should be the final informal trilogue on the revisions to the Tobacco Products Directive. Um, for anybody that's not fully up to speed on that, it basically means that a delegation from the European Parliament meets with a delegation from Council and uh, what's called uh, Per, uh, per I can never pronounce it. It's the permanent representative, per, permanent representatives of the member states. Um, That's easy for you to say. It's not apparently, um, but they, they they're all meeting together with the Commission to try to agree a set of compromises that they think that both Parliament and Council will agree to. What comes out of that? will go to the European Parliament where it can be amended or rejected. Um, and it's quite a complex process, really. Um, council is in, in the same kind of boat. They can either like it or chuck it. And <laughs> my hope is that both will decide, sod it, let's get ACIGs out of the TPD, because I honestly do think that that would be the better course of action. Now, there's been all kinds of um, leaks. I mean, the place has been like a sieve, let's be honest. And there's all kinds of leaks about what's been going on, as it's been going on, which has served primarily to confuse an awful lot of people, but it's also got dander up. And at this moment in time, I don't actually know what is going to go into the meeting tomorrow. In other words, the revised text. Yeah, and, and I think sometimes it's, it's, it's reassuring, because I know that you watch this incredibly closely. It's quite reassuring, actually, in a, in a strange kind of way, to hear you say that, because, because I can't keep up. Because, you know, I'm, I'm sort of out of the loop, off the grid, for a few mm. days at a time sometimes. And these things move so damn fast. And, of course, it crosses my mind that the stuff that gets leaked is the stuff that they want us to hear, you know? Uh, even if it's somebody with an agenda that we support... You know, that's the nature of leaks. Well, I, I, I can only go <laughs> to, to 1981, 82, um, that kind of period, when, when we were busily negotiating about CBs, and things happened in a very different way then to the way they do now. Um, in actual fact, a lot of it was done, as is happening in these trilogues, in smoke-filled rooms with a whole load of blokes and ladies sat around the table swearing at each other and saying, no, we didn't want that, we want this, This is we won't have any less than this. And I said, well, we'll give you, and you know, there was a, a meeting of the ways at certain points and a diversion of the ways at certain points. And then finally, the whole lot would go off to the legislative body and they would have their say on it as well. And that's exactly what's happening now with these trilogues. Um, they hope that they will be able to take this agreement of sorts back from the trilogue tomorrow to go into the European Parliament in the early part of 2014. It's likely to be February, March time, I believe, with a final vote scheduled for April prior to the elections in May, so that it all gets finished within this Parliament. And and, and that's fairly key, isn't it? Everybody that, that, that has expressed a viewpoint on this has said that that's what the Commission's trying to do, get this through in the Lithuanian presidency, so i.e. before May. Well, they want the trilogues finished in the Lithuanian presidency before the Greeks come in in January. Um, although what I'm hearing is that this worry that the Commission has, and certain MEPs have, about the Greek presidency sweeping it all under the carpet, 
is a bit of a misapprehension because the likelihood is that the Greeks are going to go, you know, hey, they can't think that about us. No, we will prioritise this. We'll show them. Um, and I suspect that that is... Yeah, it makes you wonder whether there's some kind of manipulation going on there just in case, in fact. Well, yes, I suspect that that is, <laughs> that, that is the case. Now, so basically what happens tomorrow is if there is agreement in trilogue, that will bring the trilogue part of the process to a close. And then it goes away and gets written up as what is effectively an amendment to the Tobacco Products Directive that the European Parliament will then discuss, I sincerely hope, and vote on. Um, which means that we still need to maintain the work that everybody's been doing, speaking to both MPs and MEPs, because it's not all over as of tomorrow. Actually, what tomorrow does is set the rules. It sets where the goalposts are. And from that point until yonder side of Christmas, the goalposts don't move. So we need to see... Just, what just to pick out. up on a point there, though, but it's still possible that they don't reach that agreement tomorrow. Oh, entirely possible. It's entirely possible that they don't reach that agreement. But this, where, this is where I believe... Mrs. McIvan has already intimated that if they don't get to agree tomorrow, because she's so keen on getting everything else, the tobacco part of the Tobacco Products Directive through, she's quite likely to suggest throwing Article 18 out of the window. You will note I'm not crying. In fact, there's a little bit of a smile on my face. Because if that's what they decide to do, I'll be quite a happy bunny. Especially if they throw it out on the proviso that there needs to be bespoke regulation for electronic cigarettes and I, indeed other nicotine and, and that's key isn't it because if they just throw it out forget about it hope nobody mentions it again that actually leaves us just fighting the uh the the, the, the westminster bunch well, instead it, of the eurocrats in it it's well it's not just us it then goes europe wide um and each member state, vapors in each member state, would be fighting their own national governments. And that, unfortunately, could be a win for national governments and those who would oppose us, for the simple reason that effort would be divided. In an ideal world, all of Europe's vapors would have one voice into Europe. Um, yeah. And Europe would come up with good, solid, sound bespoke regulation for e cigs that was sensible, proportionate and applicable to every member state. Do you know the what? That was a beautiful segue and you didn't even try, so I'm impressed, into Clive Bates' blog that appeared today. Uh, let's Yeah, let's just flash that up. Uh, cool. There we go, that's on screen. So this is clivebates.com, uh, his counterfactual blog. And... Uh, <laughs> There's a cracking uh, headline that he's got there. When we've decided, we'll let you know. An update on nicotine negotiations in Brussels. I'll just read the first paragraph because I thought it was... It reads like poetry. A secretive, opaque, poorly informed, arbitrary, rushed policy-making process is heading towards an unsatisfactory and damaging conclusion. This is an update. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I've seen nothing to justify changing my view that a proper job is required for regulating e-cigarettes and that we should have a new legislative legislative proposal. Easy for you to see. But, uh, yeah, we're both at it. I'm going to fix my teeth. Hang on. There we go. With evidence-based justification, a credible impact assessment, the basic courtesy of consultation with users, business and public health experts, and proper scrutiny by national parliaments who are formally part of the process. He does say it so well, doesn't he? He's a very erudite man, and I've got a great deal of time for him. In fact, I'm proud to be able to call him a friend, and I hope he calls me one as well, and not just that pain in the arse from Sunderland. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I couldn't I, possibly comment. Well, please regard me as that. <laughs> itself is probably a good thing. Yeah, so I'm going to say, that's not necessarily a bad place to be, mate. Oh, no, so, not at all. <laughs> no, he's, he's exactly right. Um, the fact of the matter is that, that all of the way through all of this, there's been such a mine of misinformation dealt to people who, having been over there and seen how things work, might... God, I'm surprised they remember their names by the end of a week over there. Because <laughs> with all kinds of different dots 
And, you know, it, it, it's got to be so easy to get confused. Even if you've got a staff of six or seven helping you out, um, you need to have somebody on each of the dockets that you're dealing with. So I can well understand why, you know, they would take at face value what Martina Puchke Lange um, would have to say to them, even though it was errant nonsense. No, it was bollocks. Actually, strike that. It was bullshit. Pardon the French, um, or Serbo-Croat, or whatever language that happens to be. But, you know, they would take it as red because... And I'd just like to stress for our American viewers, that's bollocks, not the dog's bollocks. Okay, There is a big I difference. Just, I, I, I'd just like to stress that. Sorry, Dave, carry on. So it's OK. No, I mean, you know, we're talking about institutions that would normally be, you would expect them to be trustworthy. Institutions like the World Health Organization, who you, you know, in years gone by, you would never ever... Aff- ever level a finger at them and say you're telling lies and yet over the last 12 months or so they have done exactly that they have an agenda and I don't know what the agenda is but I do know who's paying and that may become more apparent next year one never just knows that's a fair Uh, point I'm just going to pick up on something that's going by in, in chat there Okay. Uh, there's been a couple of comments uh, on, on the same sort of theme and that is the idea that um, I think it was Mark Shaw who made the original comment says that you know he expects to be fighting against uh, th- this this uh, regulation legislation whatever it is um, for the next five years yes. and and, uh, and then the general sentiment of people who are replying to his comment is that's a good thing and I agree mm. because the rate this thing is growing the way that the numbers are actually switching to using e-cigarettes means that the longer it goes on, the harder it's going to be to kill. I mean, do, do, do you share that point of view, Dave? Well, if you if you think about the growth curve that we've seen over the last just the last three years, we've seen numbers in the UK rise from a scant four hundred thousand, as Ash reported it, up to one point three to one point five million, as Ash is now reporting it at this point in time. Yeah, and this is an organisation that would probably try to downplay those numbers as well if they thought they could. Um, I, you, you know, I'm not so sure about that. But no? Time, no, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, I've spoken with Martin Dockrell a lot and I've heard him speak in, in various different radio shows and at various different meetings and he could not be more supportive of electronic cigarettes as a methodology of harm reduction. He is fully aware of that. He's also fully aware of the ethics, as is the rest of the uh, the board or the the, the makeup of Ash, and and it wouldn't surprise me to see a sea change in them before too much longer, because what they're being presented with now is entirely opposite to what Ash wants to see. Ash would like to see the end of cigarette smoking. I think they've cottoned onto the idea that this is all happening. The growth in e-cigs is all happening by choice. And I think they are becoming persuaded that the growth by choice is a damned good thing because at the end of the day, it's cheaper for everybody. It's cheaper for them and it achieves their goals much more quickly than any coercion has ever done since 1974. And and it's not just that it's cheaper, is it, Dave? I mean, let's be honest. Anything that, that grows organically and is done by choice, right, (laughs) <laughs> has got to be better than something that's rammed down people's bloody throats. Well, it's 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 been said for I don't know how many hundreds of years that a volunteer is worth more than ten pressed men. Of course, and absolutely if right. If you've got somebody on your shoulder going pack it in, pack it in, pack it in, you really got to pack it in, pack it in, it's filthy, pack it in. And let's it face in, it, we all did. You the, you end up doing that, don't you? Just you know, kind of foxtrot Oscar. I'll decide for myself. Indeed. Then these things come along, e cigs come along, and people who had never had any notion of chucking in fags one way or another, they had no notion of harm reduction because they didn't even know what it was. They've picked these things up and gone, Hey, yeah, I like this, this is good, I can get away with this. Oh, I'll have them. And then find out a bit later on that it's better for you or not so risky by a factor of a hundred to a thousand or whatever it happens to be. And look what's happening. And it's not just me, but I've also seen in print now that within 20 years, you could see the end of lit tobacco smoking by choice without a ban 
and, and, and if it's by choice, we chose that. So that's okay by me. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> the, the cracking comment there from Moonlit. He said, uh, you know, it really just, just, just drums home the point. Uh, it, it puts into words the point that I was trying to make there. So every time I saw an anti-smoking ad, I sparked up a fag. <laughs> you know, let, let's, they, they put those horrible pictures on fag packets so you just turn them the other way up. Yeah. <laughs> you know? If, if, if you brought that one out where they were growing a tumour on a fag while a bloke was stood outside, I'd have been going buying packets of fags to try and grow a bloody tumour just to see if it would. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure I'd have gone quite that far, but... <laughs> something to do on a cold night, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> a comment from Midge Dog. He says it's a tsunami of free choice. E cigs are a win win all round, as we all know here. Health, cost to us, public health, cost to Treasury, etc. It goes on and on. And why can't they see it? Why can they not see it? I think they can see it. They're, they're not they're acting just... like they can see it. Yeah. Ash, Ash, maybe. Ash, Ash, I, I agree with you. Ash were the enemy. But without a doubt, when I started vaping, they were, you know, the, the propaganda that they were putting out was, was frustrating to look to read, and some of it still is. But Are there's there's a there's at least a softening, you know, of of, of their stance, isn't there? But so it's a daft, daft question here, dear. But I've got to ask it. Are you confusing us, Ash, us US? That's the book, right? Ash <laughs> US with Ash UK and Ash Scotland and Ash Wales. I don't think so. I don't think so. You know, I'm going back a few years and Ash UK, Ash Scotland. Scotland was always a little bit more vociferous, weren't they? They were always a little bit more blunt in getting the message across. But Ash UK was, were, were also very sort of wary, weren't they? they? They were very much towing the MHRA line, as I recall. Well, I think Ash Scotland and Ash Wales tore the BMA line, which is much worse than the MHRA line. Is it, you know, I wish we could just disregard the BMA. They, they, well, I, they have no credibility left in my estimation. They, I have no respect for the BMA whatsoever. I, I just look at it that it's the doctors' trade union and end of. Yeah. Big you know, it's not, it's not a body that's got any sway with me in any way, shape, or form. It certainly doesn't it, understand or have public health as its best interest, does it? It's, it seems to have like pharma funding and uh, you know, doctors' pay as its number one priority. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. much it. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, isn't, is that astroturfing? Yeah, um, no, no it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's bribery and corruption is what that is. Um, <laughs> sorry, did I say allegedly? Um, Don't sit on the fence, Dave. No, as if I would. I'd get splinters up my arse if I do that. <laughs> no, I mean, the, the, the bottom line on it is, there, are, there have been various different exposés of how the pharmaceutical companies actually manage to um, drive policy by their financial incentives. And I would never say that brown envelopes change hands because they don't are quite open about it. But I, I have seen a documentary that uh, explained that when they needed a certain drug to do rather better, then various different doctors were paid rather large retainers to go and explain how these things work in various different meetings. And I do not see any evidence that that's not going on in our particular case. Yeah, and, and that goes that, that goes across the spectrum of uh, health professionals, doesn't it? You've got your doctors at one end, uh, your GPs who are making prescriptions. And at the other end, I showed a video a couple of months back now. Do you remember the guy who used to be the uh, chief exec of Pfizer? Yeah. explaining how it works with research grants for mm -hmm. for people like Glantz, frankly, you know? <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, you know... He's nobody ever that. says, we'll give you this money and, you know, fund... It's funding your project, isn't it? It's it's giving a grant, which is basically paying your salary for the next X years. Well, uh, you, and they, and then this guy was totally blunt about how it works. Yeah, I mean, you see it on the Pacific Rim. Um, in, in, in countries on the Pacific Rim there are, there are health professionals over there who are saying yes, yes, this needs an awful lot more study, don't you know um, it's going to take five years, we need 15,000 participants and it's going to cost at least $100 per participant um, one and a half million should do could you have it on my desk by next week and we'll get this started, thank you yeah, that's exactly the way it works and you don't see them, you know, going around wherever they go around on a push bike they drive everywhere <laughs> I mean, do, you know, do, you, do you know how much it costs to send a delegate to the, um, the, the, the the conference of the parties to the framework convention on tobacco control? I don't. You're looking at about eight grand. 
Yeah, I, that that doesn't shock me. That doesn't shock me. Well, it's just to get them there and get them in. That's outside the hotels. And uh, I, I'm yeah. sure, I bet, but you know, sort of uh, betting that they don't eat beans on toast all the time there at these things. Oh, I should say not, dear boy. Mark a Pierre White at the very least. Good lord. <laughs> Yeah, if they haven't won professional master chef, I'm afraid they're not cooking for us. That would be the attitude. And um, you know, I, I just sort of state the case here, you know, in case anybody's thinking of suing us, that uh, you know we're not making any accusations here about you know sort of potentially that most of the people who seem to be anti-cigarettes maybe have some kind of bias because their livelihoods depend on it. We're not saying that, are we, Dave? No, 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 it's, it's, uh, it's sarcasm. It's Absolutely, yes. Way to put it's satire, it. satire. It's satire. Yeah. Oh, it's satire. Yeah. That's, that's the word, satire. You can get it's away satire. with murder if you call it satire. I, I thought it was Sunday. <laughs> satire. Satire. It was yesterday, wasn't it? Anyway, yeah, satire. That's what it is. Hey, do you know what's next? What? Adverts. End of part two. of Dave's Tackle Box. And welcome back. Okay, right now there's another meeting going on tomorrow, isn't there, Dave? As I sort of hastily find that link. Yes, at four thirty tomorrow, the uh, scrutiny committee um, meets to discuss the whole notion of uh, EC, well, the Tobacco Products Directive. And uh, Jane Ellison MP will be there. Now, in fact, there's a whole list of people that will be there. Um, which I think has already been circulated far and wide for you to email, should you so desire, to explain your stance on what's going on. And tonight would be the night to do it, um, because they meet at 4.30 tomorrow. Now, under normal circumstances, these things appear on uh, Parliament parliamentlive.tv. Um, I have yet to find it scheduled, but if it is scheduled, if it does come up, I should be playing it out on our live stream for those who have difficulty in getting it upon their other devices such as iPads and stuff like that because yet again they use Silverlight a lot for this and that kind of requires you to have a PC um, and given that I have one... And most sensible it, people do, yeah, I just thought I'd point that out. Well given, given that I have one nestled amongst the mostly superior things that are from Apple I shall uh, press it. <laughs> Says Dave, looking at the monitor screen on a, a Mac Mini, <laughs> controlling his cameras with a MacBook Air. <laughs> yeah, and an iPad to hand and an iPhone. And an iPhone, yeah. But but, yeah. but whenever anything matters, I use this one. Yeah, you, the implant will take. Give it another six months, you'll be all happy. PC, Mac. <laughs> <laughs> All the way around. <laughs> yes, so this, this, this happens tomorrow, and the uh, the tone of the emails that I've seen flying backwards and forwards from uh, the scrutiny committee to Ms. Ellison have been 
stern. Um, yes, and, we saw a snippet or two, didn't we? Yes, and in parliamentary speak, it, it was trans- pretty yeah, blunt in parliamentary speak, wasn't it? It was indeed. If it had been translated into proper English, it would have been, Hell, you bitch, you've told well, Now get your ass down here and explain yourself before we give you a kick and because you're getting one anyway. And her reply was, with the greatest of respect, no. Well, with the greatest of respect, <laughs> what that means. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> with the greatest of respect means you're a bloody idiot, but I'll go along with you anyway. Um, so, yes, that all happens tomorrow. Um, and it will be interesting to see what comes out of that, because if the scrutiny committee is not satisfied, if they feel that it needs a wider debate, if they feel that it needs more information before it can be agreed to, they can refuse Ms Ellison the ability to vote. They can put what's called um, a reservation on it. They have reservations, and therefore the UK may not take it forward. Well, that would be fantastic. I mean, uh, with my hand on my heart, I'm sceptical that we can hope for that. Uh, that would be quite a bold move, wouldn't it? Um, they've done it before, frequently. Yeah? Oh, yes, yes, they've frequently done it before. Um, when something's come up that the UK government or UK PLC does not agree with, um, they'll say, who? No, 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 no. We need to talk about this. Not happy. You cannot. You may not. And if once she is instructed thusly, then my understanding is, and it's only my understanding, that it's um, a career-killing decision to go against them. She can't assume a waiver where there's been an outright thou shalt not. Um, So the best we can hope for, I think, tomorrow will be a thou shalt not until we've had time to kick this around a little bit more. Um, And if that occurs, that's all for the good. Because I think that would give us a blocking minority in council. Which would be rather useful. Um, it might make the point that what they have been considering thus far has the resemblance of the vomit from a dog that's been eating festering dingo kidneys with a side salad of, well, fetid mango. Um, it, it just doesn't look pretty. It's not right. It's not the way it ought to be. And it does everybody that uses it. Can I just compliment you on that analogy? <laughs> I, I'm going to sort of uh, sorry to, to jump about here but during the break I was searching for a link which Dave found for me and uh, I'm going to pop up that web page that, that you sent across Dave because we, we, we were talking about the BMA just before the last break weren't we, we were. and um, um, I'd, anybody that's seen anything that the BMA has put about uh, um, on e-cigs um, will be as appalled as I am uh, d- d- just in case you missed any of it they're advising doctors that e-cigs are not a viable alternative to smoking they, uh, there was, we've, we've featured a couple of pieces haven't we over the last few months where football clubs seem to have latched on to the e-cig idea it solves a lot of problem for them it's a practical solution for football clubs because people still smoke in football grounds and they shouldn't and it's a problem because the council comes around and says, "Oi, we're going to shut that stand down, okay?" And give you no like, free samples of e-cigs, whether it be e-lights and a couple of other companies were involved, weren't they? And we're talking about some pretty big football clubs here. You know, we're talking about Championship, Premiership clubs, um, uh, the Glasgow Rangers and Celtic, I believe, were doing it. Celtic had green lights. Rangers had blue. That's right. Exactly right. And um, so, so you know, and then the BMA took it upon themselves. Okay, we'll get on to this discussion in a minute and the question I've got is what the fuck has it got to do with them, you know? But they took it upon themselves to write to these football clubs and lie to them about uh, the fact that it, that, 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 they're, uh, that they're not safe or whatever they were saying and all the rest of it. And, and this has frustrated the hell out of me. But uh, uh, somebody posted a link. I, I came across it on UK Vapors during the week, I think. Uh, mm. And it's a link to a site called Sense About Science, and I, I can put it up. Here we go. And um, this is an organisation. I mean, uh, their, 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 their strap line under the logo there says it all. 
uh, sense about science, equipping people to make sense of science and evidence. And they've written an open letter to the BMA, uh, which they stress, uh, well, when I last read this, uh, it hadn't actually been replied to. Still hasn't. Uh, there, right, so there you go. So, so they wrote this on the 12th of December, okay? It says, we asked the BMA, oh, I should say more about who these people are, right? And, and basically it's a bunch of doctors and, uh, and scientists who challenge rubbish in the press or uh, rubbish that's been propagated uh, uh, in the name of science. Does, so, does rubbish that's been propagated mean propaganda, Dave? By um, that's one word for it. Although yes. propaganda can be true. Yeah, not in this case. Not in this case. This is, well, not dog's bollocks. This is bollocks that's been propagated, yeah? <laughs> right. So, we asked the BMA why they want them banned in public. That's a reasonable question. We all wanted to know that, didn't we? We did. Today, public health officials in Wales have called for electronic cigarettes to be banned in public. This follows a call from the British Medical Association, brackets BMA, uh, that could stand for so many things, for a ban earlier this year. The European Commission are also considering a heavy regulation on the availability of electronic cigarettes. We sent this letter to the BMA on November the 15th, so that's one month ago today, uh, asking for the evidence behind their claims about comma, uh, inverted commas, renormalising smoking and passive vaping. Despite a number of reminders, we have not yet received a response. Why am I not surprised? Um, and this is the letter that they sent them. And, and I, I know, right, just before I read this out, every person in chat here would have loved to have written this letter, I would say. It says, Dear Will, that's Will the BMA man, Will uh, Frost. Yes, Will Frost, indeed. Uh, so he's uh, one of the co-chairs of the BMA Public Health Medicine Committee. Sounds very important, doesn't it? Dear Will, football clubs have been receiving letters from the BMA asking them to stop people using electronic cigarettes in stadiums. Something that train companies have already done, citing the association's advice. As you may know, Sense About Science helps civic organisations to ask for and negotiate evidence, and we also respond to their inquiries about whether claims are evidence-based. I've had a good look at everything I can find on this issue, and I'm a bit surprised about the strength of your advocacy in the light of the evidence. From your briefing note, I would appreciate an explanation of the following points. The briefing says that there isn't enough evidence about the safety and efficacy of e-cigarettes, but cite studies that conclude that e-cigarettes are a safer alternative to tobacco cigarettes, and that e-cigarette e use has substituted for use of licensed nicotine products rather than growing the market. Professor Pete Hadjek writes in The Lancet Re Respiratory, more dangerous chemicals such as bleach rely on packaging and common sense rather than on medicinal licensing. Your conclusion that they should be banned in public and regulated as medicines appears to be in opposition to this. Why? Oh, my money. <laughs> <laughs> Since your briefing was published, an RCT by Buller et al. concluded that e-cigarettes, with or without nicotine, were modestly effective at helping smokers to quit with similar achievement of abstinence as with nicotine patches and few adverse events. There's also a Cochrane review imminent. Are you planning to consider and revise your campaign in light of these? <coughs> the claim about passive vaping needs clarifying as the potentially dangerous compounds found in e-cigarettes are present in concentration orders of magnitude lower than in conventional tobacco. So much so that there is no, again this is a quote, no apparent risk to human health from e-cigarette emissions based on the compounds analysed, according to Macaulay et al. I couldn't find any evidence to back up your claims about reinforcing the normal normalcy of smoking behaviour or e-cigarettes being attractive to children or being a gateway to conventional smoking. Is this a hunch? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, best regards, uh, Pratak Book, I guess that would be pronounced, who's the director of the Public Policy Unit at Sense About Science. Now, I'd never heard of Sense About Science before I read that, but I like these guys. I think they're fabulous. They absolutely attacked 
what the BMA have said and asked them if they're just playing a hunch. Which, when you're talking about science, is probably a bit provocative. I think it's just a shame that one of the co-chairs isn't called Esmeralda. <laughs> uh, the link for that, uh, we can pop it into chat at the end. Uh, but you're basically looking at a site called Sense About Science. That's, That's right. All one word, senseaboutscience.org. And uh, it's in their news section. And uh, I like them. I like them a lot. I'm going to send them a Christmas card. Let's not go too far. Come on. Months yeah, away. Okay. If I had any Christmas cards, I would send them one. Months away. Months away. But, uh, yeah, but we need more of that, don't we? We need more of that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I suspect we're going to see it. I really do suspect we're going to see it because the the, uh, the watershed moment, I think, um, or certainly a pivotal moment, was the uh, the e-cigarette summit down in London, um, and I was really gratified at the uh, the way people were talking down there, and that actual sense was spoken by people who I had not expected to hear it from. <laughs> Go on, name names. Well, I have no names, no pack drill. The people who, who were positive, who I, I had not expected to be, know who they are. They're not likely to be watching this, but even so. Um, I, I saw and heard an awful lot of people saying exactly the right things, the sensible things um, that we all know to be true. And, and I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again. If there's anybody out there and again, I'm not going to mention any names, that needs to sit down and talk with people who actually do understand these things and know what they're about. We have an audience here. UK Chapman. Audience. POTV has an audience. All of the forums has an audience which is very, very knowledgeable about e -cigs because we've done the research, all of us, all of the community. We all know about this. We know more than a lot of people in public health. But I... I do get the feeling that come January, nothing much is going to happen before Christmas, but come January, we're going to see an awful lot of conversation happening. And we're going to see an awful lot of people who have hitherto opposed us being educated in the politest possible way and made to see the error of their ways. And I think there's going to be some bombshells dropped as well. I'm going to say, watch the space, not this space, but watch the space. There's going to be all kinds happening, I think, in January when the meetings tomorrow are done and dusted and we know how level the playing field is and where the goalposts are because they should be fairly firmly concreted in by then. To continue um, the if, analogy, if it's going to kick off, isn't it? Yes, it'll all, be, it'll all be kicking off all over Europe, near all over the world because the Americas or the United States of America are also going through something very similar and I can't help but feel that the FDA and the Commission in Europe are hand in glove in all of this because what I'm seeing from the States echoes what we're seeing in Europe very, very closely. Right, brilliant. Time is upon us. Uh, we really need to start wrapping this up. Um, just before we go, I'd like to say thanks very much, Dave, for joining me again. Uh, that was a good old chat. We could talk for blooming hours, me and you, on these things. Very good. Um, I, I heard a rumour... And there was a trailer, but I forgot to download it, that a certain Mr Sutton might be uh, popping back up next Saturday. He could be making making an appearance next Saturday if he can get his software to work, yes. And uh, you, th this is the trailer, because I didn't download the proper one, but Swaff Confidential is what I heard. Indeed. It's confidential, you know. Oh, we better not talk about it then. I guess. I've said too much already. <laughs> and to everybody in chat uh, thank you very much uh, well done on the Twitter bombing tonight that all was a superb effort again and uh, somebody just posted there perfectly timed P Pete Dermody saying not far off 50,000 tweets Great work. 50,000 that's quite a lot uh, we've got to go I'll be back again next week thanks Dave thanks everyone thanks for watching bye, bye.